There is a new breed of individuals coming to the table now. I could name this table manners. Perhaps I will. But there is a new breed of people coming into the kingdom now. A new breed of soldiers. And they do not have table manners. It was a time uh, coming along that people would teach the children table manners. And don't put your elbows on the table and... No, you eat like this or turn around at the table. Um, wipe your mouth or put your napkin in your lap. But this breed of individuals that's coming into the kingdom now, they don't know table manners. There's a time when children want to eat what's on their plate. But there's a new breed coming now. They want to know what else you got. And that word, what else you got, came to me from my grandchild. He was the youngest. He was um, at the hospital, had been sick and getting better, feeling better. And they begin to feed him and he'd get some ice cream or this or that. Um, and his mom filmed him and he was in there with the nurse and she was showing him yogurt and showing him different things that they had uh, to snack on. And. He looked at that and he looked at this thing. He was excited, but he kept saying, what else you got? And she would put something else there and he was excited to smile, but he said, what else do you have? What else you got? She would bring something else and I kid you not, that child kept saying, what else do you have? What, what, what else you got? Hungry for more. Perhaps he couldn't name what he was hungry for, but he knew that when he, she presented what he was hungry for, he knew that that would be the thing. So he kept asking, and there was a lot of laughter in the room, but it is much like what will be manifesting now. The people that come to the table and come into our services, they are going to want to know what else you got. They're going to want to know, uh, is this it? They're looking for a real genuine encounter that will bring forth a real contentment on the inside. That's something that will fit on the inside of them like a glove that they were meant to carry. The reality of the presence of the Lord, the, re the reality of the Holy Spirit dwelling within being filled with the Spirit of God. Sometimes we think about uh, order and we teach the children for table manners. We teach them order. Sit like this. Sit correctly with your back up. And all the while, these children are looking for more. And these individuals that are coming now, they're not going to be moved and they're not going to be impressed by table manners. Table manners. They want the real authentic thing. They want an encounter with Jesus. They want to experience Jesus. They want to taste and see that he is good. They want to walk with him and talk with him. Uh, they want to see beyond this present situation and the present moment and the present uh, thing that we're looking at and the present thing that's risen in the land and the present situation that has uh, risen around them and around the world that they live in. They want to look beyond they want to look into a new dimension. They want to look into a new realm. They want to see more. What else you got? Oh, you say we're citizens of the kingdom, but what does that look like? And what is that doing for me now in the present reality that when I see people that need to be healed and people that need to be set free, and when I see them come in the house one way and many times they can leave the same way if we have nothing else to offer. What else you got? When we think about order, we can be in order with man, but out of order with God. And what about when God presents his order? His order may be strange and different.
from the order that we are accustomed to saying. We can say the word order, but his order may be for you to get out of the way. His order may be for you to serve up, not what you're going to serve up today, but serve up some spit and mud. His order may be for you to pull aside, let's do something different altogether. His order may be that there's something wrong in the camp and we need to uh, find a solution for the poison that's in the food. His order may be, no, you go lay hands on the sick and the sick recover. I'm sending you. Don't look for me, but I told you to go do it in my name. In order with man, but out of order with God. Man says, a boat is made to ride in. Man says, when you're on the ocean, you will stay put in the boat. But what about God's order when he calls you out of the boat? When he calls you out of normal? When he calls you out of familiar? When he calls you out of the usual? When he calls you out of that lukewarm state? When he calls you out of that cold state that you used to been you used to sitting in? What about that? When he calls you away from the posse that you used to be traveling with? When he calls you away from that thing that you think that you have to attend and tells you to come and follow me on that particular day. In order with man, you can be, but you can also be out of order with God. You set everything up. This is to be here and that's to be there. And God comes in and wreck your plan. Man said, now it's to be done a certain way. And what about those that will come in and tear the roof off the place? And it's in order with God. Oh, glory to God. Sometimes we can have a wrong perception when you, we use that word order. Somebody say, no, you put your pants on, your shirt on, your socks, and then your shoes. But what about God when he tells you to do it in a different way? What about when he tells the prophet, hey, I need you to walk through town streaking? I know, I know. I'm just saying. But do we know? Woo. In order with man, but out of order with God. God wants to increase us more and more, but do we want the more? Can we hold the more? Do we have room for the more? Are we hungry enough for the more? He said, I will increase you more and more and your children. Mm -hmm. I got some more to give you. Don't think I've run out of resources. Don't think my cupboards are empty. Don't think that I would ever be exhausted of resources. I have unlimited eternal resources. I will never run out of provisions. I want to increase you more and more. I have more to give you. But in the book of Esther, as we often talked about that chapter in the book of Esther, I believe it's the Living Bible Translations, the first chapter, but they, the king threw a party. And at the second party, what he threw for those that are close around the uh, palace, um, and the guests were there, and he said, give them all they want. He told his servants, give them all they want, but not more than they want. Somebody is satisfied right where they're at. They're not trying to get more. You're satisfied with yesterday's leftovers. You are satisfied doing the same thing you've been doing for the last 50 years. You are satisfied using that same old uh, thing that you've been using. You are satisfied 
But God wants to give you more. But you don't have room for more because satisfaction is in. And that's why God said, give them all they want, but not more than they want. God is the one that says, gather the fragments that nothing be lost. God is not going to give you the gold and the pearls and the silver. And you're just going to cast your pearls before the swine. You're just going to let it lie there because you don't have room for it. Whew. Give them all they want, but not more than they want. Mm. I heard someone say, you have not because you ask not. When was the last time you asked God for an upgrade? When was the last time that you asked God for an increase? When was the last time that you told God you had room in the end? When? When was the last time you said, Father, I want more. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I'm waiting for you to come in. I'm waiting for you to fill me, God. I need more. I can't do nothing without you. I'm empty on the inside without you. I'm yearning for more. My heart is panting for more as the deer pant after the water brook. So my heart is panting after you, God. I want more. Mm. Ooh, glory to God. God is looking to bless those who are hungry and thirsty at the righteousness. Those who are hungry for more. You see little children when perhaps they may be in church or they may be somewhere. I've seen them and my own children had done it. And you pulled out something out of your purse, maybe a little peppermint, a little piece of chewing gum or what have you. And they grab hold to your purse because they're in want to look in and see what else you got do you have any more of that or what else you got and you pull out another little piece of gum or peppermint and put it give it to them but they still got the pocketbook prying it because they want to see what else is in there how hungry are we for god how hungry are we for fresh revelation, fresh bread, a fresh move of God, a fresh breath of God, a fresh touch? How hungry are we for increase? This child holds on to this person. He's looking at the dad may come home and I've seen it done with my kids and has a piece of candy in his hand and gives him a piece, but he closes his hands back up and that child Holds on to what he's been given, but he's trying to open that other hand because of, he wants to see what else you got. What else is in there? God is looking for somebody today that will not settle for peanuts, mm. but they want more. Takes us back to George Washington Carver. He didn't settle for peanuts. He wanted more. Peanut butter. <laughs> Shoe polish, cookies, cakes, juice, pies, cleaning products, dye, you name it. So many things that God gave him the initiative and the creativity to create from those peanuts because he wanted more. What will you do with what you're holding now? What have you done with what God has put in your hand? What have you done? Hmm. This has been Table Manners. All right. I'm out of here. Have a great day.